The properties of the sea which make submarining so dangerous also make communication with submarines extremely difficult. All contact with the outside world happens here, the radio room, perhaps the most classified place on the boat. Secret because of the sophisticated cryptographic equipment used to decode messages sent from onshore command centers. And this is the place where we are in constant communication to receive messages as directed by the President of the United States that affect the status of our weapon system. To assure that a message from the President will get through, the Navy can transmit radio signals from land, air, and space to its fleet of submarines. The most reliable method uses an extremely low frequency radio wave, or ELF. But ELF is slow, capable of transmitting a limited number of characters in a given span of time. To receive higher frequency radio waves and more data, a submarine crew can deploy a long wire that floats close to the surface, or the submarine can risk detection by rising close enough to the surface to put up its antenna. A submerged submarine's only sensory input is sound. The sonar team must rely on dozens of underwater microphones dispersed along the hull to safely guide their way and to alert them to anything or anyone who might be in the surrounding waters. Bell buoy bearing 149. Okay, there are two kinds of sonar that, are, that we basically do with the uh, passive and the active portion. Um, the passive is much like a, a microphone picking up sound out of the water and um, transforming it into uh, electrical energy, that, which we see on our screens. Um, that's where we just listen. The active portion is an actual ping out into the water. You'll, you hear that a lot on your submarine movies on TV, um, voyage to the bottom of the sea, stuff like that. That's the active portion. Um, we, we personally like the passive a lot, a lot better than the active. That's uh, CR3, right? The pinging of active sonar would give the Michigan's position away. Passive sonar not only keeps a submarine hidden, but provides more detailed information about what might be out there. CR2 and CR3 are classified light merchants by nature of sound. CR1, uh, unable to get oral classification. We can distinguish different ship types. Um, for example, a submarine we can distinguish from a, a merchant ship, things like that. We're not quite at the hunt for Red October stage where the machine will automatically tell us. That's where the sonarman's knowledge and aggressiveness comes into play. How far can you hear with sonar? Really far. That's all I can tell you. The rest is classified? You bet. And the only sensory input a submarine skipper has is his sonar. Therefore, he has to have a leading sonarman who, first of all, is very good at his job and secondly, knows how to communicate with a skipper. So there's no ambiguities. He knows exactly what the sonarman's thinking and the sonarman has to know exactly what the skipper wants. So that's, uh, aside from the commanding officer, that may be the most important job on the boat, being the leading sonarman. <laughs>